Okay, um, so today I've got a powers piece that um, I'm going to ink for you. So I drew this in um, Photoshop. I actually used um, some photos, photo reference, like post file type stuff of, you know, guys and girls with guns and such uh, doing different poses. Um, and then basically I just traced the, the you know, basic pose. Um, redrew over it, of course, my own style and such. A lot of artists don't want to admit to ever doing that. They don't. A, a lot of artists just trace photos too. Um, but the only thing I really find uh, truly objectionable about it is other artists attacking and judging other artists for um, for tracing photos, even if they're doing it badly. Um, you know, mind your own business. <laughs> it, uh, it's not a technique you want to encourage people to do when they're doing it badly and stuff, but I also think it's pretty crappy when other artists want to get on some sort of weird moral high horse to judge other artists on what they should or should not be doing or whatever. Um, but anyway, when I use it, luckily because of my cartoony style, it really doesn't show through. Um, and even when I do something more realistic, I, I don't want to be a slave to the to, to the photo. I don't like to do that. Some people do, though. Some people want to be as reproducible of um, their idea of, of reality as possible. And um, you know, even, if, even though it's not my thing, great. Um, that's good for them. And, and as long as they're having a good time and enjoying what they're doing, I think that's what's important. So anyway, that's what these started with. These started with with found photos that I really dug. I like the poses. Um, and, uh, you know, this is just for fun. Um, actually, this is for a convention um, I'm doing in, in London um, and doing a piece that I can raffle off. So anyway, um, these sketches started from photos that I sketched over, drew my own stuff onto, um, changed stuff to, to make it how I wanted to, you know, uh, how I wanted to, to feel on the page. Um, I also grabbed one of our logos and thrown here in Photoshop. And then the reason why this is in this blue is because you can you can under the under the image settings there's something called a monotone and you can change it to this light non reproduced re reproducible uh, blue tone um, so that when I scan it it's only going to pick up the inks um, now if you've watched these videos before you see I use this brush a lot it's a Karatuki uh, brush pen that has a refillable um, ink cartridge um, you're supposed to just buy new ones and put them in here. But because I go through so much ink, that's really impractical. So I've brought a syringe, and then I refill it with my own ink, which is uh, this Talon's uh, Black Tattoo ink. Uh, it's super black. It's super flat um, without being bloppy or anything. Um, so also in Photoshop, I, I did a little bit of black spotting. You can see these shapes on his face. That's going to be a shadow. This is going to be a shadow with a little X in it and such. Um, and I'm just going to get right down to it. Um, Camera might the image might be a little distorted because of this camera at the angle. Like it doesn't exactly match the table, so um, his head doesn't look quite as big here as it does on the screen that I'm looking at. Um, I have a bad habit of starting to ink with the faces, which is probably the, I really shouldn't do that until I'm a little later on into into the page because you want to get used to how the brush is working. Especially this is right now. This is the first thing I'm doing in the morning. Um, I just had breakfast and played around on the internet, getting depressed on Facebook. Uh, so then I figured it's time to get to work. Uh, so I'm not fresh at all. There's no, there's no warm up or anything. I'm just going right into this. But don't forget, I'm old. I'm forty. I'm going to be turning forty two soon. Um, uh, and I've been seriously drawing comics. Um, on my own since I was like 12. Every single day, most of the day, I didn't really do sports. I didn't really do, well, I did a little bit of sports in high school, some wrestling. Um, but I just didn't do all the other stuff. I, I sacrificed a lot um, to be the best artist that I can be, um, which is frustrating because when I look out there and I see how many other amazing artists are out there who didn't have to like slave and sacrifice their lives away <laughs> to be as great as they are, um, I realized, man, it's a good thing I put in that time because I would really suck right now if I didn't. Anyway, what was the point? I don't know. Um, people have asked me in these videos to do some more sort of commentary 
Uh, so that's what I'm going to attempt to do right now. So uh, you'll have to excuse me if sometimes I lose a track of thought or whatever. Um, a lot of times when I'm working, I'm listening to music, especially if I'm drawing um, the drawing stages. Listening to music is, is very helpful and it's not distracting. Uh, when I'm inking, um, I'm typically listening to uh, television shows, podcasts, um, most especially YouTube with a lot of the crazy sort of uh, UFO and conspiracy stuff that I enjoy. Um, if you see me posting about that stuff, if you wonder how much of that I believe or don't believe, the answer is I don't know. I don't really care. Um, I just really love this stuff. I kind of love the the what if of it, you know, especially when it comes to you know the ancient aliens hypothesis, you know, the sort of Eric von Donegan's chariot of the gods type of stuff, you know about possible civilized, ancient civilized worlds coming to um, populate ours or, the, you know, that the gods and angels of old and mythology are based on, uh, you know, aliens or whatever that were here before. It doesn't matter to me if it's real or not. What matters is that it engages my imagination. Um, when I was little, my mom and I used to love watching all the sci-fi shows, Doctor Who and all that stuff. And most especially, there was this show called In Search Of with Leonard Nimoy. Um, and it was all about this, this type of stuff. Um, and it's great looking at, you know, um, ancient civilizations that we don't have answers about or what was going on there. And, you know, just doing the old Stan Lee what if thing. Um, and I find that as I'm working, even if it's on like crime noir, like powers, that sort of thing just keeps me excited and interested in being creative. So, so there you go. Um, this is going to be black back here, so all of his exterior lines, as long as the interior part of the line is, is clean, I don't care what it looks like over there. That's all going to get filled in anyway. Um, I'm not going to set up a major light source. Well, I guess I already have. Never mind. There is a major light source here, which is largely coming from the lower right side, kind of kind of from the gun, kind of not. You know, it's not, again, it's not meant to be literal. This isn't a, a photograph that I'm trying to reproduce or anything. It's just uh, the mood I'm trying to capture. That's what's important. Walker's mouth is always tricky because it's really easy to accidentally make a little bit of a frown into looking a little too much like a, um, almost like a smile. And I know that might sound weird, but one of these times we'll catch it while I'm recording. And then it'll make more sense. So this is the inside of his hair. What I'm doing on Walker is, uh, because there's a black area behind him, I'm going to make the exterior of his line work is going to be where the white is, so you can kind of see the shape of him. Um, another option would be to just black it out. Your eye is going to fill in the shape anyway, but it could look a little weird. It's a, it's a, it's a risk to take sometimes. So that's one of the reasons I love Photoshop is I'll often just take a big thick brush on another layer and just try out different shadows. And I'm like, what if I blacked out this? What if his hair is just completely gone and he's just this black shape there and stuff? Will it still read? Um, you know, you could just test it out. Why, uh, why not? Um, one of the things I'm trying to do more of is this sort of floating shape thing. So instead of closing the line here in his face, I'm going to let just this, his like sort of eye and his cheek area here just kind of float in the air. So I'm not going to connect it to there. Uh, part of that, what it does is it helps your mind and your eye read the light. You know, this, this exterior white line that's kind of goes around here. Um, and it's just a really cool noir kind of effect. Um, you know, Less is more kind of thing. Um, and I'll see where else I could do that. Also, what I do a lot of times... In, oh, shit. All right, so you see how I have his uh, tie coming over here? I just started to draw it like it's going down. So I'm going to say fuck it and just leave it like that. And I could bring a line over here. 
like this. But that looks a little funky now, so when in doubt, black it out. <laughs> <laughs> the great Wally Wood was quoted as saying that. He's this another artist who uses uh, tons of black. You know, he's in a. It's just one of the legends of comics. Slightly lesser known than some of the the bigger guys out there, but he is amazing. And uh, when in doubt, black it out. So good. Um, I think it's fair to say that that's something that really propelled Mignola's work. Um, you know, Mike is one of my my. Um, inspirations. Um, he's a great guy. I, I'd consider him a, a pal. Um, uh, but Mike said, you, you know, he was never really comfortable with his drawing. So a lot of times, so the way his style came about was just blacking, blacking out stuff. And even to this day, when you look at pencils on Hellboy, um, they're highly detailed. And so much of it is he just paints over it with big black, you know, with big black pen or something. It's crazy. Well, it's not crazy. It's that's just how it, his styles developed, and it's amazing. I kind of wish I didn't bring this line from here to here because I'm going to have. I wish I'd done the floating shape thing here. So, this is where the gunfire is coming out of, because I'm going to have a shadow here. Here's a gun shell casing is flying up. Like this shape, just being all black in here, would have described the gun plenty with the shadow without having to fill that line in. Nothing wrong with this line. It's just I would have preferred to have done something different. Um, again, the beauty of Photoshop afterwards for the printed version, I can, uh, I can just try it out. Just try it out. Maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. Another floating shape here. So this will be black from the shadow there. This is the wall he's kind of crouching behind. So I'm just going to leave that exposed, leave that open. Um, so something I, I did more of when I was a bit younger, I'm not exactly sure why, you know, sometimes you just drop certain techniques and such, and you don't even think about it, just, you know, things evolve and change naturally, and you go with the flow, or at least I do. I'm obviously not a perfectionist. I'm not trying to drive myself to be a certain thing. I just want to be what I am and do the, the best that I can. Um, but one of my favorite artists out there is uh, Chris Samney um, and another cat, uh, Ron Salas, who um, they do a lot of solid, solid shapes with um, less rendering and a lot of, like, Chris and, and Ron will look for places to do these sort of floating shape things, these, you know, not connecting of the lines. Um, and they do it really well. Um, they, they, to me, they seem to be able to just do it second nature without even thinking about it. I need to think about it a little bit more, um, partially because I'm out of practice with it. Um, and yeah, so I'm just trying to get back into that these days. Um, also, being around for as long as I've been around, uh, yeah, there's nothing wrong, I'll tell you, there's nothing wrong with learning from other artists, no matter how old you are. Um, I've also heard other artists talk about stealing techniques, like, oh, I invented this technique so-and-so, used it here or there or something. It's, it's such a, a bizarre false sense of back, pat, back patting. I don't understand. You're an artist, and you learn from other artists. This has been the tradition for since the beginning of art. It's, it, it, art begins as imitation. Um, whether you're imitating life or other artists or other techniques, uh, the, the masters all did that. They all started out drawing exactly like somebody else, so they found their own thing. And I'm sure even as years went by, even after they had their, their own style and their own techniques, if they were smart, they paid attention to what their peers were doing, and they continued to, to learn and pick up those other techniques. So if you see me or Chris or Ron or Mignola or anybody doing something that you like, you know, pick it up and try it out. Um, and figure out how it works for you or doesn't work for you. And uh, don't be so concerned about what other people think about you. Concerned about what you think about you. If you're having a good time, that's what matters. Even if you're a clone of somebody else, and, I, and that's something I don't like. I don't like it when another artist is exactly like somebody else. Like there's been a few times where there's certain artists who I was, I thought it was like a X and X cover and it was somebody else completely because the style was so close. 
But you know what? That's on me. That's my problem. That's my issue. Um, that's not the artist who did that. Whoever did that, if they're happy with that, fine. Don't listen to me. Don't listen to anybody else. Do it. Do what it is that makes you excited about what you're drawing. Um, I used to be very judgmental as an artist, and um, now it's. I guess in a way I'm still judgmental because I'm I'm kind of offended by other people's judgment. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense or not. I also don't like it when other artists attack other artists. Um, you know, we get enough criticism from uh, you know really excited comic book fans and um, websites that just need to plug themselves or look cool by making fun of something. You know, every morning you. You know, the the more attention you get in the industry, the more hate you get as well, and more criticism you get. So, the last thing I think an artist should ever do is attack another creator or criticize another creator directly. It's not cool. Not cool. Uh, here's Dina. Her face is looking a little manly. I gotta watch this jaw here. I also made her mouth too wide. So I'm going to bring this brush on the inside. And she's also in shadow around this area. So again, I don't have to worry too much about this area. Um, in general, when I'm inking, the simplest way to think about it is thick to thin. The thin side stays where the light is coming from. Light is coming from this side of the page. So say this is her, I don't know how clearly you can see through this camera, but here's her nostril. This lower nostril I'm going to make sure is pretty thin line because that's where the light's coming from. So thin, but then it's going to go thin to slightly thicker as it gets to the top of the nose. And then the thick line here which indicates both shape and shadow. The reason why I did this sometimes is you just want to test out really quickly the state of your your brush nib. Um, and if you're using a traditional brush, which I use a lot of too, I use these, pardon my reach, these are just cheap watercolor brushes, uh, cotton and Windsor Newton, number three. Threes and twos are good um, for me, anyway. Uh, but so the, these ha those have a much better brush line, I think, a lot more life than this does. The problem with those is, um, you know, I have to constantly dip it, dip the ink, dip the ink, dip the ink, stop, dip the ink, clean off the tip. Uh, this, while has slightly less life, I mean, I get this really great controlled line, but I also don't have to dip it. I could just keep moving. So sometimes, at least for me, uh, you know, I'll, I'll definitely sacrifice a little bit of quality for time and consistency, sanity. <laughs> um, I like to to move at a decent pace because I'm always working on several projects, um, and I still love this brush. I love the way it looks. Um, there is a, a just a minutia of that other brush that I, that I like a bit more. Um, and just, I don't know, I don't know why sometimes I'll, I'll, I will go ahead and say, fuck it, and use that watercolor brush. Um, I don't know. So these shadows I'm doing here are not going to be literal at all. It's just going to be just really loose. I'm going to use the, the upper edge of the tip of this to get a kind of a dry brush effect um, like this but for the shadow um, but you need to do it fast and that can be dangerous alright that'll have to do Walker's tie probably should have uh, shadows over here maybe I'll do it in Photoshop I don't know Dina's gun My guns are not super accurate, but I'm also don't have a fetish for guns, so I don't know. Again, my style is not literal. It's not the real world in any way. It's it's an impression. So as long as you understand it's a gun, that's all I'm happy about. I have a real admiration for for technical artists and. Um, Sometimes I wish it could be like that, and sometimes I'm super glad that I'm, that I'm not. It's all personal taste, too. 
I have found over my career since I started working in this style, some of the, the most admiration I get are from artists who um, are very realistic, who do um, very realistic stuff. Um, and, you know, I think it's because we're both doing something the other, the other person sees that they like and would like to do, but it's just not their thing. It's not my thing. So it's really cool talking to those guys and you get together at cons and you talk about your approaches and you're like, oh man, I wish I could just like take all my detail out like, like you and really just relax and enjoy the page. And I'm like, yeah, I wish I could draw a car. <laughs> uh, so this area is shadow as well. Um, the lights from below. Um, I'm going to let the shadow really do the, the light description here. I'm not going to, like, let's pretend this line here, let's pretend this line is this line, the edge of her thigh. Another way I could do the lighting here is to do something like this, where I render her thigh with, with these little lines, you know, um, that would, I can show you, kind of describe the shadow. But I've got this black line back here, and I'm just going to let the shadow itself do the description. I don't need to do that. I could do it, but I don't want to. Oh, that is not a good butt for Dina. I like a, a high rump. There you go. A little bit of a shelf there. Belt. There's something about drawing belts and the loops of belts that I really like. Don't know what it is. I think that's really cool looking. Uh, now, originally, I think I was trying to draw or show that Dina was wearing like a, a gun, gun holster thing, and there was like a strap here. But as I look at it, I don't see that working. So I guess she's gonna wear t-shirt. There we go. And get to Dina's ear. Again, not a, a literal ear. I mean, it's three shapes. There's like a triangle there, a little C shape in the middle, and then a big C shape for the outside. That's it. Gotta put in Dina's 1990s ear cuffs. <laughs> I think they were out of style even in the, you know, 99 or 2000, whatever it was, I was designing Dina originally, but I liked it. So Dina got ear cuffs. But what do I know about women's ear fashion? Like maybe ear cuffs never did go away or I don't know. I don't even know why I'm thinking about it. Uh, I guess I could talk a little bit about the Power Show. Well, the TV show is going really well. I go over to Brian's, Brian Bendis's. Uh, we live in the same town here in Portland, and uh, go over to his house usually at least once, maybe twice a week. And we'll watch um, we'll watch the dailies. We'll watch raw footage as it comes in. Um, we're now getting both dailies and rough cuts of episodes. So I think at the time I'm recording this, we've seen up to like episode six. So Dina's lower lip is black because the lighting is coming from below. Um, anyway, yeah, so we've seen like up to episode six and lots of cool stuff with Trip Hammer and Dina. Dina's going to have, I think, the largest arc 
the largest character arc out of any of the characters. And we're going to see her grow more than we've even seen in the comics. Um, pardon me. Um, all the characters are great. I mean, and I'm not just saying that because it's my show, but uh, it's the actors, the actors that are bringing amazing energy to um, to their roles. I mean, you kind of expect somebody like Eddie to really, you know, do a home run, Eddie Izzard. Um, and of course he is. But then there's also watching Michelle Forbes as as Retro Girl command the screen like she's Wonder Woman or Superman or something. Like she just, she grabs you. It's it's crazy. Um, and I know that's what she does. Like if you've seen Battlestar Galactica, Razor, you know, um, that's, that's what uh, Michelle does, Michelle Forbes. Um, but she's doing it so well here. It's just it's shocking, and some of the other characters I think are going to be little little breakaway characters, little surprises that you weren't expecting. Um, getting back to this real quick, I'm going to switch over to a pen for some of these things, um, like the the gun discharge from Walker's firing here. The reason for that is because it just feels like light effects feels like they should be more in a single line pen thing because they just don't have the same kind of weight that objects do, that physical objects do. Um, I also, uh, down at the bottom here, I used like a Google SketchUp thing and blacked it out as a silhouette to give a London skyline. Um, so I'm just going to, again, well here I'm going to just use a pen. Sometimes when I'm working, I make uh, dumb special effects sounds. Beta boom. I don't know why. Um, part of working in your head drives you a little crazy. Um, all these lines here for Walker's where the wall is, I'm going to clean that up in Photoshop. So right now they're a little wonky, but when I go ahead with a with a white line and cut that, it's going to look really sharp. I'm probably going to add other some more depth to like some more lines like there. I'm going to add some more black to, to Walker. This is basically done, really. Um, because all that I've got left to do is the, the powers symbol or logo, bring down this, this black line in the middle and, and fill that in. But basically that's done. Um, so the, the rest of it, I'm not going to bore you with, um, all right, go. Um, I'll try and put a little photo of the, the finished thing of this after, but I'm not sure if I know how to do that. So this generally is going to take me it's 25 minutes now. I slowed down for some talking. Um, probably take me another 15 minutes to finish all of this. Um, so it's, it's roughly 40 minutes to ink a cover or this thing that whatever it is, this pinup piece. Anyway, thanks for listening, guys. I will um, see you soon.